This video is going to be split up into a few parts. It's not going to be your traditional review of the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro. Let's be honest, you've seen that a million times already. Instead, we're going to go down a different path. We're going to have a look at some PS Vita emulation, a load of different games. I am going to talk about exactly how you go about installing that software, exactly how to get the game set up. And I'll talk as well about my impressions of the device, the overall ergonomics of it, and a few issues that I currently have with it. So hopefully you have a slightly different take from the masses. So my thoughts are something like this. I absolutely love the design of the translucent model. I think it looks stunning. There are a few things on the top. So you've got your triggers, which have a slightly tactile feel to them. And that really does help in terms of control. They feel fantastic. Then you've got your analog sticks. I don't like those quite as much. These are the indented variety. So they're slightly concave. That's good for a little bit of control, but I also find that they are a bit sharp on the edges, as strange as that sounds. But this is a very easy problem to fix with just some custom toppers. The D-pad is really nice. That feels great to me. I like this style. It feels easy to move and yeah, I've got no issues there. And then you've got your select and start buttons on the right hand side and your home and back buttons on the left. On the top of the device, you've got your volume buttons. You've got your mini HDMI out and your power button as well as a reasonably sized grill for releasing all of that heat. Now, as you can see, and it's quite useful on the translucent model, you can actually see straight through to a rather large heat sink underneath. And despite that, even when you're in performance mode, it doesn't get too hot thanks to that large design and the heat is obviously blasted out the back. But volume is a little bit loud when it's at full tilt. On the bottom then, we've got our USB type C, a headphone port, and we have the TF card slot or SD card, micro SD, whatever you want to call it, and your two down firing speakers. Despite reports of quality issues, I haven't had any problems and so far, so good, fingers crossed. Things like battery life are surprisingly good. This is an area that I haven't heard a great deal around, but I began all of this testing and making this video about 70%. Around two hours later, I'm down to about maybe 58%. So we really did have an amazing response on the last video. So thanks so much to anyone that enjoyed that one. This is now our sixth video on the channel and I'm gonna talk you through PlayStation Vita on the Retroid Pocket 4, which I haven't actually seen anyone else do yet, so hopefully it's of some interest to you. Now, as we know with the Retroid Pocket 4, this is actually the Pro model, which has slightly higher specs. You can see those probably here. And those specs mean that you can push it to the limits in terms of some of those harder to emulate games. So with that in mind, I'm gonna show you first how to actually install the Vita system software, how to get your ROM set up, and then we'll have a little look and see how it plays. You're gonna to wanna to head over to vita3k.org.org and then grab the Android Nightlies from their GitHub. If you click into there, it will show you this screen. You can head on across, or down I should say, to the Vita Android release 10, I think is the latest one which came out just last month, and download that. Now I've already downloaded it, so I'm not gonna do that again. But for you, you'll just click download and it'll be in your downloads folder. From there, you can install it like any other APK. You may potentially have security alerts letting you know that you need to allow permissions because this is an unverified APK. Follow the prompts on screen, it's all straightforward enough. Once installed, we've got a few more things to do to set it up. Firstly, choose your language. There's English United States, or oh, thank goodness, UK. And then you're gonna to need to install a couple of packages to get this up and running. Now, interestingly, you will actually need to go through the official Sony website to get these, but it directs you exactly where you need to go. Just click on download firmware. It loads up the official uh, software update section of the PlayStation website. Now, if you're on the Retroid Pocket 4, you're gonna click download update and nothing's gonna happen. You're gonna get frustrated and do the classic thing where you do the exact same thing many times until you realize that if you hold your finger down on the download button, scroll all the way down to download link and click that, then it'll actually work. Click keep and it will download properly. Once that's downloaded, you wanna head back to the application and then click download font package. Now, this one's much easier. Just clicking download font package will mean it downloads automatically, nothing else that you need to do. You'll then have these two files, PSV update or updat and PSP2 updat. They're both .pup files. You don't need to worry about that, just is what it is. And now you need to actually get these installed. And to do that, you need to direct the software to look at the right drive. So find where you've got them. And it's just a case of clicking and waiting for it to install. 
Once installed, you want to click on next and you'll see a few options here, which you can completely ignore. Click next again and it will say you've completed the initial setup. Your Vita 3K system is ready. And it really is almost that simple. Now I'll give you a few pieces of information here as well as some guides and some forums that you can go and check out for compatibility lists of games. And you'll be surprised to hear that there are actually over a thousand games that are completely playable. Well, supposedly on most Android devices, so we'll see how it goes here. You'll then be prompted to create a new user. You only have to do this once, so give it a nice name, something really thoughtful, like uh, Markitech. What's also worth doing is potentially having automatic user login selected, because let's be honest, well, for me at least, it's only gonna be me playing the games. Once done, you're greeted with this screen. Now, you can ignore the majority of this. What you really are after straight away is to basically get into your game and see how it runs. Now this software does have support for controllers and it also has an on-screen overlay that you can toggle off in the options. But first things first, we're gonna to have to get our legally backed up PS Vita game. Now it is quite important that you're installing a zip file. You may find that your package isn't a zip, it might be a seven zip folder. The thing to do there is to just unzip it and then rezip it as a zip. I know that sounds ridiculous. There are probably more simple ways but that's what I had to do and it was worked out swimmingly. So here's what I mean in terms of the, uh, well, the zips. So it'll come as a seven zip file. You're gonna actually wanna unarchive that once you've got an appropriate piece of software installed. Raw works absolutely fine. Hold down on the file and just click extract files. I just extract it to the exact same folder. You can speed this up slightly by enabling high performance mode in the options by swiping down clicking on performance, and then choosing high performance. But obviously that's when the fan noise really begins to kick in. Just uh, have a little listen to this. All right, after waiting what feels like a, uh, a very long time indeed, you will have the folder ready. Now, I say ready, it's not, it's actually unzipped. You now need to click it, hold the button down, and uh, add it to archive. I know. I know, it, it, what are we doing here? Well, we need to add it to zip, so we need to make sure it's a zip archive because that's the only, well, not the only, but one of the only archive types that can actually be read by the Vita software. With that in mind then, just click on zip, click OK, and let it do its thing. Once that's finished and you've stopped questioning your life choices, you can delete the original folder if you want to. Just keep things nice and tidy and you'll have your Borderlands 2, or whichever game you've uh, legally backed up, you'll have the, uh, the zip folder there. So mine is Borderlands 2. I thought this would be slightly comical, just because of the meme level uh, of coverage that this game got when it first came out. Select File, and then locate your zip file for whatever legal backup you have on your, uh, on your storage. Then you'll have to watch this screen, which does again take a uh, little bit of time. Okay, so once you've done your press ups or walked around the room and wait a while, you'll be back to this screen where it says something along the lines of installation complete, one archive found, uh, one archive contents successfully installed, and you should, in theory, be good to go. Okay, so from there, you're gonna to wanna to click okay, and you'll see that you've now got some actual software at the bottom of the screen. This is where the fun really begins. So let's have a look. Let's see how it actually works and if it runs. Now, while I'm waiting for this to load, I will say that you have to restart the software. So once you've installed a game, you'll, you'll boot it and tend to crash and then think it was all a disaster. Once you restart, you should find that the game actually boots fine. Oh no. Now, Depending on how you've got your setup, you will see some on-screen verbose messages. You can also have frame rates on the screen as well. We're not seeing many artifacts. We're not seeing texture shimmering. I'm really impressed by, yeah, as I say, how this is looking and how it's holding up at the moment.
A couple of very cool things that this emulator offers, one of them being trophies. So it supports full in-game trophies, so as you earn them you can actually head to a section of the menu and just check out the trophies that you've currently earned. You probably can't see it, but while we're waiting for some things to load, this uh, monstrosity turned up, so make sure you subscribe, because we'll be uh, going over this wide boy in the next episode. For science then, let's check out a couple of other games, and a few that supposedly don't run as well. Now, with this software, if I can show you, you actually have a compatibility section on the left-hand side, and then by looking at that, you can basically tell using a color system whether it's going to run or not. Now, Little Big Planet supposedly doesn't run fantastically, but we'll see what it, see what it can do. Oh my goodness. Well, that's what you get, I guess, when you choose a game that isn't compatible, or at least says it isn't. It's not lying. <laughs> it's basically unplayable. From that, let's head over to some Metal Slug. Okay, so no problems there with Metal Slug 3, that's absolutely fine. Let's check another game out. So yeah, as you'd expect, Shovel Knight runs absolutely fine. So, your mom and dad are busy as always. They're working overseas, was it? I know it's only for a year, but getting stuck in a place like this because of your parents? That's rough being a kid. Well, as long as you're here. Absolutely no issues there with Persona 4 Golden, that runs flawlessly. And I do like how they're going in the direction of creating these little custom, I, I guess, uh, what are they like, launchers. 
So overall, although the Android version of the Vita emulator is still in very early, I guess early access, there are actually some very good performing games available right now that you can enjoy. Now, as I said at the start, it doesn't take a great deal of setup, but it does take a little bit of patience. And before you know it, you'll be playing a couple of games. I'll pop links to all of the uh, different things that I've used in this video. They'll all be in the description. And as I said, we've got a couple of other devices, including um, <coughs> the wide boy in the next few videos. So make sure you stick around and remember to hit continue. Snake. Snake.